Today on UW360, new hope for thousands of people who suffer from seizures. The life-saving work developed here at the University of Washington. Plus, new technologies designed for kids with the help of kids. Check out the serious child's play happening at the UW's high school. Also, much more than just a job, see how a UW library program is literally changing lives. And check out the hottest summer camps around for future Husky superstars. Hi everyone, from the University of Washington, I'm Carolyn Douglas. Welcome to UW 360. Epilepsy affects about 3 million people in the U.S. Some have occasional seizures, while others can have them every day. But now, as Stacy Sakamoto reports, some UW medicine patients have found relief from their seizures thanks to a high-tech piece of equipment called the Rosa Robot. <laughs> you know, I'm a high-energy person, and then these would start to, the seizures would hit. They're very brief, but then the impact I'm suddenly exhausted, and, and exhausted in a way like you've just run a marathon. Michael Fox was healthy, active, and a successful professional when he was diagnosed with epilepsy. I'm, I fought through so many different things in my life, and this one, you can't do anything. As his marketing job became more demanding, the seizures increased. That I would have as many as 15 seizures in a single day after 15 seizures in that one day, I, hadn't, I didn't have the energy really to lift a, a, a cup of water to my mouth. At that time, we had a two-year-old and a four-year-old. To watch them watch daddy have a seizure, and that this, that panic in their face, like what is happening? One of the worst things about epilepsy is you never know when the seizure's gonna happen. It's always hanging over their head. Am I gonna have a seizure? What's, how that's gonna affect my life? And so I, I think the fear of having a seizure never totally goes away from people. We knew that the medicine wasn't working, surgery was an option, but brain surgery it just sounds incredibly intimidating. My seizures were increasing to a point because each seizure causes damage. And as it increased, I, I got to the point of having grand mal seizures. I stopped breathing during them. So the point was, at some point, one of my seizures is going to cut off breath to the point where I'm going to die. The seizures terrified Michael, his wife Wendy, and their six children. He was referred to the UW Medicine Neurosciences Institute Regional Epilepsy Center. The treatments vary for those patients. Sometimes it's, it's medication, sometimes it's different medications that's not, that aren't widely available. Sometimes it's devices, and sometimes it's brain surgery. One of the things that uh, both a physician and a patient uh, get when they're working with the UW Medicine Neurosciences Institute and of the Regional Epilepsy Center is that whole team. So it's not just the parts of the team, but the interaction and the fact that we're all uh, thinking about the patient and not just our pieces of the puzzle. Here it was a partnership. We want to know where you're at, what your needs are, and if we're communicating effectively. Michael's healthcare team was able to identify the source of his seizures. You know, this is a, a, a very exciting time in medicine. We have had the benefit of new imaging tools, uh, new technologies like the laser ablation. Uh, we have a, uh, the Rosa robotic device that allows us to place and slide in a very thin laser and then heat uh, the lesion uh, while watching the temperature in the MRI scan. And so these engineering advances and imaging advances have allowed us to give very targeted uh, therapies. I think they went in right there. And there's not a mark, there's not a place, nothing, nothing at all in there. My goal is to get, have patients get their life back because seizures have such a profound effect on people's life. After fully recuperating, I do drive. I have time with my kids. Yesterday, I just finished re-roofing our, our 1,850 square foot house. And that's just uh, one of the many things that I've been able to do. This is an unquestionable world-class facility and I felt like royalty. I was so well cared for. So I think we've got all the time in the world to do this. Doctors say that in more than half of all patients with epilepsy, the cause is a mystery. 
Still to come, some of the most sought after student jobs on campus. Meet some lucky students who not only got the job, but a scholarship too. Plus, new technologies designed for children by children. See these tech innovators of tomorrow in action. And meet a UW grad whose job is just a game. We'll give you another clue as UW 360 continues. The following UW 360 story is made possible by the generous support of BECU. BECU, more than just money. Welcome back to UW 360. Here at the University of Washington, the search is always on for the next great idea or amazing invention. And at the UW iSchool, one professor has a secret weapon to help find it. A group of talented elementary students armed with some awesome ideas. The mission is fun, it's good for research, and it includes snacks. Smile! Smile! No! Yes! <laughs> this is the sound of Kids Team UW at work. So think about ways to make Block Studio better. Where, where are you going with that design? Is that like a notification system? At the UW Information School, these elementary school kids are helping design technologies that other children will eventually use. One of the goals of Kids Team has always been to design uh, new children's technologies for children with children. What would you do with it though? Like, well, so you could we... work together as a team without having to use several things. Like... This is cooperative inquiry, a method Jason Yip learned during his doctoral studies. His team is made up of children from 7 to 11 years old, as well as students from both the UW's iSchool and Human Centered Design and Engineering. We're going to give you 10 minutes to play with the new Block Studio. After 10 minutes, what we're going to do is we're going to give you bags of stuff and paper, and we want you to draw all around like what the interface will look like. No, 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 I don't like that. The kids actually help direct the how we design. Oftentimes they'll tell us, like, can we do it this way? Can we do it that way? And we'll listen to them. Okay, you guys, you guys, let's we're starting over. Jason's team works on projects with community partners like Microsoft, Seattle Public Libraries, Concord Consortium, and Seattle Children's Hospital. Today, they're working on Block Studio, a programming tool for children and families. For me, working with Kids Team is invaluable because this is a system that's made not for experts. It's aimed at precisely the opposite kind of user, a novice. What these kids do is they help me think like a child, and so they help me find gaps and flaws and problems with visual design that I would never be able to find on my own. This is the thing I drew there, was the thing I did on the computer, and then I added things that I wanted to do right here. I added a chat box. This is different from usability studies, where a group tests a prototype, gives feedback, and leaves. These kids are involved much earlier in the design process, and they get to see the results of their suggestions. Uh, I'm always surprised, like every session, never. I, I always walk away with like something that I'm like, yeah, I would never have thought of that, yeah. Just think, this thing could be a lot of different things. It looks like a rock to me, though. This is But my friend might not know it, what I'm talking about if I just say the rock, so I can just drag it into my, uh, ch uh, my chat. Dragging the icons into the chat window, that's really smart. I like that a lot. For the kids, it just feels like fun. They make friends, eat snacks, and play with computers and art projects. Yay! Yay! <laughs> kids don't oftentimes have a way to say, like, I want to do it this way, whereas in Kids Team, we do give that chance. Jason's future plans for Kids Team UW involve looking at accessibility issues for users with disabilities, working with families on design ideas, and trying out Kids Team in a public library setting. So I think there's a lot of ground to cover. There's just, I've only started scratching the surface with a little bit about Kids Team. So um, yeah, it's just, I hope that there's a, there's gonna be a bright future in all this, so. Got it? All right, give my hand. Yeah! All right, who's next? You can get more information about Kids Team UW at our website. Just go to uwtv.org slash uw360. There are 16 libraries on the University of Washington's three campuses, which employ more than 650 people, 300 of whom are students. And for many of those students, it's much more than just a job. 
In fact, one library program in particular can transform their entire Husky experience. Having student employees at the libraries really gets more students involved at the libraries and gets them realizing what is available here um, and what they can utilize to improve their studies and their experience at the university. Student employees help other students see themselves in the libraries. Hi, how can I help you today? And so having that student connection and they're, they're going through it with you and so they can maybe recommend sources that they've you know, used in the past. Without the student employees, there are so many collections that just wouldn't be available. Working at the Dr. Kama Library, that's my first job. It, it is great because I learn a lot. I learn to be confident because uh, of my accent. I was shy talking to other people, especially on the phones, uh, answering questions. Now I feel more confident. Working at Special Collections is going to impact my future career partially because it's given me a lot of practical experience. Oh my smell gosh. Smell that baby. Ooh. Ooh. Mm. You can smell that nitrate. Yeah. Nitrate when I graduate, I will have had like a year and a half worth of practical experience that um, honestly I think will be a huge impact in my ability to uh, get a job straight out of my master's degree. Let's mm -hmm. check this out real quick. I've learned a lot, you know, not just about myself, but just for my studies. Uh, at working at the info desk, I have to be really kind of knowledgeable of all the different databases that we use, particularly in like a health sciences background. You have to do a lot of lit reviews and finding sources that, you know, are peer reviewed. And so that's been really beneficial to me. The libraries really matter and they make a difference. I was pretty pumped about the fact that the library wants to recognize the student employees as really valuable parts of how the libraries function and that they've chosen to do it in a monetary way that honestly has a big impact for students. Keep doing it. Um, the student employees at all the libraries around campus work really hard and they're deserving of it. I just want to say a big thank you for people that donated the scholarship because for us students it's hard to pay up for our school and every time we receive a scholarship it's a very big happiness for us because being a student going to school doing homework tests exams is stressful and worrying about money it adds up to all the donors who support the library student scholarships uh, thank you Contributions mean a lot to students and mean a lot to how valued we feel here at the libraries. The library's Student Employee Endowed Scholarship Fund celebrates students' potential to change the world and can make a huge impact on their lives. To find out more information or to support this scholarship fund, please visit the link on our website at uwtv.org slash UW360. Still ahead, we head to one of the most popular summer camps around where kids are the stars on the Husky play fields. America's Cup for 400. Back to Kelly. Plus, who is Kelly Miyahara? That's the answer to our question about a UW alum who travels the world as part of the Jeopardy game show. We'll meet her next on UW360. Welcome back to UW360. From astronomy to zoology, there are dozens of degrees to be earned at the University of Washington. But you're about to meet a Husky graduate who had no idea her business degree would put her life in jeopardy. Guard Swanson has the story. <laughs> you sitting up. Every now and again, you might find yeah. Kelly Miyahara strolling through the University of Washington That's campus, cool. sometimes with her father. Oh, it's just gorgeous Not very often here. you get to see that totally clear. No. 17 years ago, Kelly graduated with a business degree. Who knew it would lead to broadcast? It spent a lot of days in this library. Um, I was a business school student. So, so you go business to yeah. communication to broadcast. See, I mean, you never know. This is you. 
Currently, Kelly is one of the stars on Jeopardy, the most celebrated game show in history, traveling the world as part of the Clue Crew, searching for the most unique tidbits of information used in the show. Inflatable rescue boats are serious rescue tools. The glistening dunes of the White Sands National Monument this American novelist, more associated with whales. It's our job to bring clues to life, huh? Today she's back on campus, far away from the glitz and glamour of global travel and the Hollywood buzz. It's here where the University of Washington helped prepare her for the real world. Being here and a part of it and thinking, oh my gosh, my grandpa walked this campus as a student. My parents walked, right. you know, this campus as students. That's, that's pretty cool. Kelly also helps host Sports Jeopardy. We traveled to Los Angeles recently and caught up with Kelly at the Jeopardy studios. Well, since you're doing Sports Jeopardy, how about the women's basketball team doing great? I women's know. golf team. The football team goes to the Final Four, basically, in, in <sighs> collegiate terms. I need to go back to school. And like, isn't, it, isn't that <laughs> it crazy? It was exciting when I was there. So. <laughs> As a result, I grew up watching Jeopardy. Niagara my mom's favorite show was Jeopardy. It was the only show we were allowed to watch during dinner time because my mom was a school teacher, but it was educational, so we right. could watch it. Um, and then becoming a part of the show. I mean, something I watched every day, and yeah. now I work for the oh, show. Yeah. Alex Trebek is my <laughs> colleague. I mean, it's, it's just a strange feeling. She's been with the Clue Crew now, I think, 10 or 11 seasons, so she's one of the new kids. Kelly's been with the Jeopardy shows for more than a decade. She is polished and professional, and nobody knows that better than Harry Friedman, the 14-time Emmy Award-winning executive producer of the show. She's a bundle of energy and uh, really a, a great representative of the show. She is a husky in Hollywood. In fact, she continues to give back. She's part of a UW mentoring program in the communication department, encouraging students to fulfill their career dreams. Recently, a group of Husky students traveled to the LA studios where Kelly enlightened them on showbiz. Kelly knows where they're coming from. So she, she could remember being a student here. She could talk to the students about what her experience was like as a student. Troy Bonas helps run the program. He also made the trip to LA and saw firsthand the importance of Huskies helping Huskies. And she could give them really practical advice on step-by-step -step processes to, to enact what, whatever they're gonna do once they're done with UW. One of the students to embrace the career exploration trip is Nicole Rader. She recently graduated with a degree in communication and was part of the group meeting Kelly behind the scenes on the Jeopardy set. Hey, you know, like you can see someone else doing it. You're like, oh, okay, like that kind of grounds that dream. You're like, oh my God, like I could actually be that person doing that. And seeing someone in that is extremely helpful. He's crazy. Is he crazy? At the University of Washington, yeah, it's all about coming full circle, guiding students to their life's path, even long after graduation. Ah. I'm so lucky, I guess, to be a graduate, a husky, a forever husky. I'm Kelly in Japan. When Kelly's not busy on the Clue Crew or Sports Jeopardy, she competes in triathlons, including the Ironman in Hawaii. Straight ahead, kids take over the UW sports venues. See how current UW players are helping the players of the future in some of the most popular summer camps around as UW 360 continues. Welcome back to UW360. Summertime is fun time, and that's especially true at the Husky Athletic Facilities. Every summer, young athletes from all around the Northwest get to learn everything from baseball and football to rowing and tennis. Aaron Mayofsky takes us camping with the Huskies. Name a sport, and you'll probably find a summer camp for it at the University of Washington. Baseball, yeah! volleyball, and soccer, just to name a few. Young athletes getting stronger, smarter, and self-confident. Berkeley, let's see one. Where are we gonna go? Go here. Let's see it. I was a little dog and I'm back. Like it's 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 kind of a life thing and it's great and we really do care about the Seattle community. No, no, no. It's a family here, so it's great to kind of grow the family and give back to everyone around. Fast as you can go if you're not falling down. We wanted an all-women's soccer camp. We feel like that's a really important experience for our daughter, and we've just heard really great things about it from other players, my daughter's coach. Thousands of these sports whippersnappers show up every summer. It's a time to learn and have fun. We love baseball! 
Is it amazing to see the draw from the kids all over? It is, yeah. We've had kids from California and like way up north and stuff. I think the word's kind of spread about these camps. I mean, they're a lot of fun for the kids. They're a lot of fun for the coaches. When you have your ball between your feet, I don't want your head down, because in soccer, we got to play with our head up, right? Over the years, current and former Huskies have enjoyed and grown into superior players with the help from these camps. And most of these little athletes today are Husky hopefuls, dreaming someday playing for the dogs. Like, I want to be a Husky player when I grow up, because my mom went here, but she did um, volleyball. And when you talk about volleyball, Van Sant is a valuable Husky. Not only was she an All-American, she's now giving back to the UW as a counselor at camp. You know, we're just trying to find the next best kid and, you know, it ends up being one of these kids out here that's 11 and 12 right now and it could be pretty fun for them. As you know, at the Pac-12 level, the recruiting process starts kind of at a young age. So those 7th, 8th, ninth graders are getting their looks early, and a lot of those kids, especially the local kids, have been through our camp system in some shape or form. Usually softball is for girls, but you know, having them do baseball, I mean, I think they can learn from baseball just as much as softball. The tips they give us, they have so many great baseball tips about batting and pitching and fielding. It's just so fun. I've learned um, a lot. Maybe kind of a little bit of perseverance because it's a long day and you just have to keep going. I think it's an incredible experience and I think that camp is something that you make of it. You know, the type of effort that you put into it, whatever the level of camp, you can always get something out of it. And I tell these kids, they're not above anything. They're doing the same drills that the Huskies are doing every day and that they can work on those things. And, you know, even if it's not their thing, they realize that hard work and determination pay off. Well, as you can imagine, those summer camps fill quickly. If you want to check out camps for next summer, just go to our website and look for the link to the Husky Camp webpage. And that does it for this edition of UW360. If you'd like more information on any of the stories you saw today, just head to our website at uwtv.org slash uw360. You'll also find us on Facebook and Twitter. I'm Carolyn Douglas. Thank you for watching. And we'll see you next time with all new stories from the University of Washington.